So, everybody, welcome to Study Salesforce with Stephen. My name is Stephen. This is hosted with uh, uh, Salesforce Stephen. And we also have Tanya Abundas. She's uh, our partner with this. Um, and uh, she'll be introducing herself here in a second. So a little bit about me. My name is Stephen Pricer. I've been in the Salesforce realm since um, I started studying since in the early November of, well, uh, November of 2021. And to let you know, you are not alone on your journey for studying for admin. I decided to start this admin study group back in, um, what was it, June of 2022, because I failed the admin uh, uh, um, test not once, twice, three times. I failed it three times and I passed on my fourth time. So after failing it three times and I was studying by myself, um, then I decided, I said, hey, you know what? I need to do something. Um, I became a talent stacker. Um, that was in February of 2022. Uh, I started, uh, I became a talent stacker at that point in time. And then uh, I uh, uh, joined Maravis in May of 2022. Um, and then I started the study group. And after starting the study group, everything changed. You know, so if you have failed the admin exam, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. That's why we're here. We're here to help you out. We are a community. So when are we going to be doing this? We're going to be doing this on Tuesdays and we're going to be doing this on Thursdays. Tuesdays, I have slides. I will be breaking everything down and all the groups down. When I say all the groups down, you're going to see on the slides today exactly how we break it down, how we're going to study for this. And then on Thursdays, we're going to actually get into a dev org and we're going to build in dev org because you're going to see this is a different test and it is a unique test on the way you have to approach it. And if you've been approaching it at the way you normally take tests, then maybe that's the wrong way you've been taking it. And um, so we're going to try to approach it in a different aspect. So that's enough about me. Um, Tanya, go ahead. Why don't you introduce yourself, please? Well, hi, my name is Tanya Bundes, and I'm a Salesforce certified administrator. Uh, like Stephen mentioned, I also failed my admin exam several times. And I met Stephen through Meravis. And when he started that study group, I made sure to hop on and make sure that I wanted to evolve and just find different ways to study. And he was great during this whole process. Um, all his videos were always so helpful and we ended up partnering up and being able to try to continue with Salesforce Steven and try to bring it to the community and have everybody learn it in a different way and hopefully be part of your guys' journey. So I appreciate you guys being here. Yes. So thank you very much. And by all means, please put your link in, in the chat. Let's get everybody connected. And um, so if you haven't connected, uh, put your link in the chat, everybody, let's get connected on the LinkedIn. If you have any questions, take your microphone off of mute, please ask the questions, ask questions in the chat. Um, if I don't know the answer, I will try to get you the answer. If someone else knows the answer, we are a community. Um, I may not know all the answers. Um, I, well, I could definitely tell you, I won't know all the answers. Sometimes I may give you a bad answer. If I do that, please call me out. Whether you're actually seeing this on the YouTube channel or whether you're actually in the class right now, whether it's live, call me out, please. And, um, let's also you know, make sure we bring our seats, you know, let's make sure we bring our seats and let's do it in a respectful manner. So. Again, we will be doing this on Tuesdays, 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, Thursdays, 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. So before we dive in, do we have any questions? So with you recording it, um, yes. Stephen, will, will there be, I'm assuming that you're going to be sending out a link um, just in case you're not able, someone's not able to make it on Tuesday? Correct. And we'll be sending those, sending those links out. We'll be posting those links on um, 
my channel also on, um, if you haven't been following us on our Salesforce channel on LinkedIn, and then that's okay. on uh, uh, Salesforce Steven, and we'll be posting those on Salesforce Steven, and then okay. also on our uh, YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. So they'll be uh, uh, uploaded on the YouTube channel. Great question. So your, is your link here in the comments? For yeah, and yes, it is. Our LinkedIn is on in the comments. Uh, Tanya went ahead and did post that. And then, um, Tanya, if you can also put in the uh, um, Salesforce Steven um, uh, LinkedIn in there as well, please. And then, um, so that way we'll be posting everything up in there too. And then, uh, uh, so that way, and we do have a website that is up right now. Um, that's just a temporary website. We'll be having a better website coming up too. Um, but as uh, Salesforce Stephen evolves and everything. So, um, but any other questions? That was definitely a good question because we will be recording this and we'll be push, putting them out every Friday. Both recordings, the recording from Tuesday and the recording from Thursday will be put out on Friday. So that way you, everybody has them during the weekend. And of course, it's all free. Um, go ahead, uh, um, Pala, Pallavai. Hi, yeah. um, Hi, I'm sorry. Is Pallavi here. Um, go ahead. I wanted to ask uh, the agenda of this meeting. First, I joined in a couple of minutes late. So is this a uh, session? Uh, current session that's going on uh, beneficial to the first time admin uh, was who are going to take the admin test or yes so we're actually getting ready to dive into the very first part of uh, config uh, setup and config mm -hmm. okay yep. uh, because I, I, uh, we, uh, I'm a certified admin certified as well as so how is it going to benefit me? That's what I was, uh, with the sessions, I was trying to ask that. Well, um, if you are admin certified, then this is not going to benefit you at all. Um, um, this may benefit you if you are trying to um, study up for a platinum uh, platform app builder. If you're trying to study up for um, admin advanced, this may help you out in that aspect. Um, because um, they uh, uh, both of those are do have platform um, Salesforce admin uh, in there. Yeah. But um, if you're already Salesforce admin, this is not going to help you out. Um, this is for people studying for Salesforce admin. Okay, because mm. I, I was thinking it was something related to we are going to contribute to a um, uh, nonprofit or we are going to use our skills for... No, no, this is this is just for to uh, so if you're already Salesforce admin certified, mm -hmm. this is this is for people trying to study for Salesforce admin. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But thank yeah. you for joining. Thank, thank you. you. And if you know anybody who needs uh, uh, needs help studying for the admin certification, that's what this is for. Okay. Thank you. Steve. Thank you. You're welcome. Great questions. Great questions. I'm happy everybody joined. So. Okay, without much ado, we will go ahead and get started. So <clears throat> now I also like to optimize the screen so that way um, you won't see my big head or anything like that in, uh, uh, in, in front of the video or anything, or excuse me, in front of the slides. So, okay. So again, if you have any questions and you don't want to ask, please put them in the comments. If I miss them, I know um, Tanya will only be in the class for um, half the class today. So uh, if I miss those comments, please, by all means, um, someone call those out. Okay. So let's get this started here. I'm going to move here. Go ahead. Um, let's see here. Give me one second, make sure I have all my screens up. There we go. And. Oh, cancel. All right, here we go. Excellent, so. Everyone should be seeing the very first slide, correct? Yes. Okay, good. 
I was going to say, because I don't see the notes. I don't see um, uh, anything like that. So, <clears throat> all right, let me put up my all my uh, uh, chats here right here. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So, um, uh, also, if someone went ahead and asked if uh, I have my certification in the next 10 days, any tips? Um, yes. Okay. So, if you have your certification in the next 10 days, if you um, uh if my best uh, tip for you is as you go through the practice exam, have your dev org open because that's going to be one of the first things we're going to talk about here. Have your dev org open. This is something that is extremely, extremely important. Okay. Um, you need to have your dev org open because for any question that you get wrong um, as you're taking your practice exams, go into your dev org and make sure you get that, um, you search to find out what it is so that way you fully understand it. Because this is how we're going to change the way we study. We need to change the way we study and you need to look at this from the aspect of um, a user, of an admin user, or even as a user. So we're used to studying things, um, for instance, traditional tests, as you know, it's going to be something that's A, B, C, D. We need to take a look at it in a different aspect of um, a user. So that is something that is going to be um, very important that we do that. So if you haven't signed up for a dev org, does anybody have any questions on what a dev org is? Because sometimes people, you know, um, and I have talked to a lot of people to where they're even certified um, and they have not even started building a, in a dev org. And even though they may have heard of it, they may be familiar with it. And it's okay if you haven't. So yeah, everybody, uh, this is Satish. Happy New Year, my friend. Good to catch up with you again here in mid-January. Quick question on the difference between your personal dev org that we can sign up for, like from the link, uh -huh. and the trailhead playgrounds that are offered when you go do a trail like security and, you know, set up the user setup in trail mix for the trail mix. Could you just go over the differences between those playgrounds and your own developer, uh, your, uh, you know, the DE, DO yeah. edition? Yeah, exactly. Um, there essentially is almost, almost, um, when it comes to functionality, there's almost no difference. You can actually create a dev org and then connect it to, <clears throat> excuse me, um, connect it to your um, playground if you did not oh, know okay. that. Yeah, you can. Oh, can you, know that. Yes, you okay. can. You could do that. Um, but once you do that, you don't want you you can't go back essentially. Okay. Got it. You it's know, irreversible. Yes. Right? You can't a, go, okay. I mean, you can still log on and you can still use that dev org, but um it is now it is now connected to the trailhead and it is going to be used um for whatever projects you're gonna use under that trailhead. So maybe the, not a good idea to do yes. that. So maybe keep them separate. It, it, uh, right? Just be prepared to lose it if you're going to do that. All right. Okay. Yeah. So, so, the, so the trailhead, and this is something to understand too, um, the differences in between having um, a dev org, a sandbox, and um, the trailhead. So, okay. uh, and then uh, um, the dev org is just something for us to play in to um, practice in for us to learn in for us to grow in. Right. A sandbox is you're checking the functionality of something of a production org. Okay. That's the difference, right? Okay. It's right. not something for us to learn and grow and play in necessarily. That's what a dev works for. Right. And then a trailhead is something that's actually connected to a learning or an LMS, if you will, a learning management system. Because there's other companies um, 
uh, uh, that can actually, for instance, um, you can connect um, your dev org to their learning management system and, for instance, check to see if certain tasks are complete or not. Um, does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you. So um, it's very important, if you want to follow along throughout this time frame, that we have signed up for a trailhead. Okay. So let's continue on. Let's move on. Excuse oh, me, wait. I said a trailhead. I meant a dev org. Yeah. Okay. So, all right, let's continue. Now, we all know at this point in time. Now, I will also state that, um, again, to make sure that there is no confusion, this is to help everybody pass the Salesforce admin certification. Okay. Um, this is, uh, this can help you with other certifications um, that support the Salesforce admin. Um, do I have a question? Nope. Okay. Um, and that uh, there, I, there is an uh, assumption that when you're going through this, that you have already passed through the trailheads, that you have already gone through a certain level of training. But if you have not gone through any of the trailheads, some of this training may be above you. So I just want to make sure that is stated as well. So, okay. Um, that being said, now we know that the outline of the exam, configuration and setup, 20%, very big portion of the test. Object manager and lightning app builder, 20% of the test. Sales and marketing applications, 12%, service and support, 11%, productivity and collaboration, 7%, data and analytics management, 14%, workflow process automation, 16%. Today, for the uh, next three weeks, we're going to be looking at configuration and setup because that's 20%. Who all who all has issues? Who um, Okay, if you don't want to say that you failed it or you, you've been having issues with configuration and setup, you don't have to. That's okay. But if you have been having issues, go ahead and say it. I mean, uh, I had issues with it. Um, Anybody had been having issues with it? When you say issues, uh, what would you, what would you mean uh, by that? Like for instance, you know, maybe maybe you've taken practice exams and it's shown okay. that configuration and setup has been in one of your weak points, or you've even you know failed the exam once yeah. or twice and configuration and setup has been your weak point. I can say that within configuration and setup, uh, fiscal years is my weak point. <laughs> right okay. Now. Okay. And learning that and really understanding it to pass the exam with fiscal and, cal you know, fiscal year set up and for, uh, you know, and those uh, related uh, topics. Excellent. We're going to go over that today. Anybody else? No? Okay. All right. So, and then hopefully as you feel a little bit more comfortable, you want to go ahead and if you want to put it in um, sales and marketing. All right. So we have someone that's talking about sales and marketing is their weakness right there. Mine, definitely it was uh, productivity and collaboration. I got a 0%. Even when I passed it, I got a 0% on productivity and collaboration. It was chatter. Gets me every single time. Anyway. Um, okay. So, Configuration and setup. Let's get the boring parts stuff out of the way. Describe uh, the information found in company settings. I'm going to say this part again because sometimes I feel, and when I say this, I am referring to myself out of my own experiences because that's the one, only thing we can speak about, correct, is our own experiences. Now, configuration and setup, we always skip reading through this stuff, but I think this stuff sometimes explains really what we need to be learning. Describe the information found in company settings. Example, company settings, fiscal year, business hours, currency management, default settings. Mm -hmm. This part right here, and we're going to see this right here. When we see company settings, what do we get that confused with? At least, and again, this is myself. This is something I always got. Company settings, company information, and this third one confused, and it got me questions wrong so many times because I got these three confused. Locale. Say again. Yep. Locale. Yep. Default locale, right? 
Okay. Because I always got company settings, company information, and default locale confused. <laughs> but they're all three related, and we're about to take a look at that. Okay. Sure. Distinguish and understand the administration of declarative configuration of the user interface. Given a scenario and demonstrate the proper setup and maintenance of users. Explain the various organization security controls given a user request scenario and apply the appropriate security controls based on features and capabilities of Salesforce sharing models and given a scenario, determine the appropriate use of a custom profile or permission set using the various profile settings and permissions. I hate reading off the of slides. Okay, so now when I said we're going to take a look at this from um, uh, a user aspect, okay, an admin aspect. I changed my slides, and um, first thing I want to, oh, I'm going to go back one right here, bottom left hand corner. Easily confused with default locale settings, okay. Company settings, they are easily confused with the default locale settings, um, and. This is something that I have gotten myself many times. Um, and even with that company settings, company information, those things I have confused all together. Okay. So if we take a look at the hierarchy of these, which one is the first one? What, so if we're looking at that, what, which one's first? Company settings. Um, okay, good. Company settings. All right. So then which one's next besides Satish? Anybody else? What's So we have company settings. Then what are we going to see? Company information. So then we're going to see company information because see, we have company settings right here, right? So we have company settings. Um, so then we see company settings. Then we have company information. Yep. And then once you click on company information, then we're going to see our default locale. So if we remember that, as we have uh, um, uh, certain questions, that's how you're going to be able to remember um, and differentiate. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, that's how you're going to be able to differentiate on certain questions. For instance, if, um, and I'm trying to remember uh, a specific question um, if they ask, if Salesforce uh, ask a question, because believe it or not, this is something I'll tell you from my own experience, is you will find that as a Salesforce admin and uh, as a Salesforce consultant, the amount of times you go into a company settings is a lot more common than what you would think, it is a lot more common. Today, we're going to look at the company information, business hours, fiscal year, currencies, and holidays. And then we're going to go a little deeper in those, okay? So right here now, um, um, with as we've been talking about what's going to be confusing, we don't want to get confused. Company settings, company information, then default locale. Any questions so far, by the way? All right. Okay. So, and all right, then let's continue moving on. Now we're going to go a little deeper into company settings. So, excuse me, company information. Now, as we go into the company information, this is what we're looking at. Company information. And um, by the way, on Thursday, we're going to actually go through each one of these step-by-step. -step. We're going to go through each one of these step-by-step. -step, and I want to make sure that um, I, I, I did say that. Now, when we say default locale, what do we think of default locale? Language and time zone. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, okay, so we had time zone, and then I'm sorry, I didn't hear who is who said that previously. Uh, me, language. Language. Yep. Okay. So yeah, we already have on here um, uh, our language, our time zone. Okay. What else is there? What else do we see? I, I have it highlighted. Sometimes we don't even think about it. Go ahead. Currency. Um, uh, our currency, yep. A definitely currency could be part of it. Um, our name, our address. Um, and this is sometimes we don't think about that. We don't think about um, 
uh, with that. So the default locale is in the company information. So our default locale is within the company information. Where else is the default locale located at? Or the locale, we should say. So now we know it can be changed. So we know that the default locale can be changed in two, so one location, at least at a minimum in one location, right? On the user page. Okay. So, um, so okay, so we know it can be changed. And um, so what can be changed on the user page? Um, the local and language, uh, even the time zone. Everything can be changed. Uh, okay, not the so, organization. So and we can change it on the user page. Okay. And then um, now that's going to be for which locale, though? The user's locale. Ah, uh, the user locale, right? Exactly. And see, this is something that we want to make sure that we, um, because this is where, this is where sometimes we, that, that um, because Salesforce likes to be tricky with the questions, right? And it's also always those keywords. So if they want to say, okay, well, if we, they want to change the default time zone, the default locale time zone, where do we go to change that? Company information. Company information under company settings, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So we go to company information. Okay. So sometimes we want to make sure, but what if the user wants to change? So if the company is located in um, England um, and the time is set to uh, uh, the GMT time, and then um, uh, let's see here, but then we want to set it to um, central standard time. Uh, then where can the user change their time? Their user record. User record page. Say again. User settings. Exactly. Their user settings. And their user settings is going to be, and this is something, their user settings. Now their user settings are going to be found where? Under the profile. Under the user page. On user page. Okay, but how many locations? So who can change the user settings? Uh, they themselves can change and the administrator. The administrator, exactly. So we, we want to make sure the user themselves, right? Because as you can see right here on the slide, um, the user themselves can change it. Okay, so we see right here that uh, in the upper right-hand corner, the user can change it. We go under settings right here. And then once they change it, then they can come over here, they come over under there in language time zone, change their, and now they just change their settings. Because we want to make sure that, well, how come we want to make sure that the user knows they could change their own settings? Sorry, could you please come again with the question? How will okay. they know how so, their settings? How come it's important or why is it important that uh, the user, why is it important that the user knows they could change these settings? Um, to guide their juniors. Okay. Um, yep. Yep. So that, that they could guide their juniors. Okay. Yeah. So, That's good. So they don't have to depend on the admin to do it. Ex for yep. We, yep. Exactly. Because I to, as an admin, you know, um, I did 16 years in the army. We like to say that's a 10 level. You know, so that way you're not going to be bogged down yeah. as an admin. You're not going to have all these requests. So anything you could push down to uh, a user level and make sure the user knows what they can do at their level, you want to make sure they know how to do it. So that is sometimes where we could get the locale. When we say locale, organization locale, the default locale versus user locale. So that's why we talk about this is that so that keywording can be tricky. That keywording can be tricky. That user locale, organization locale. Organization locale can be changed in where? Where, where can the organization locale be changed? We have it right here. Anybody we have it right here on the side. I think 
think he's not able to hear us. Say again. Uh, we are Can't... saying company information. Oh, you are. Okay. Then, then I was unable to hear you. Yes, that's definite. Everybody's screaming at me. Company information. <laughs> yeah. You're like, hey, whatever we just, uh, whatever I just said, it was really smart. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, good. Um, okay. Excellent. So now we know about the, our um, locale. We know, and then our locale information. And what's interesting too, we take a look at this. We even see that there's the address. You can see the, all the information because if you go under the settings, uh, the user settings too, you can see that they could input and they could change their own address. They could change their own time zone, you know, um, obviously um, their their currency, so on and so forth. So we can see there's a lot to change under their own user locale versus the org locale. Okay. Now, storage. We see that there is two different kinds of storage here data storage, and file storage. What's the difference? Data storage is for record storage. File storage is some... Um, yeah, no, you know, go ahead. Yeah, you're saying that correctly. Data storage is the record storage. File storage is what? Attachments. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly it, right? You know, um, and that's it. So, data storage is all those uh, is all are, are all the records, and then um, file storage are all the kitty pictures, right? You know, um, that's exactly what it is. And so, um, as long as we make sure we know the difference between what the the, the storage is there. Um, okay, uh, let's see here. Um, okay, so that's what popped up on my third monitor here. Okay, and then, um, then I would just want to make sure I'm not missing anything on my notes here. So, oh, it's also to um, so when we take a look at attachments to include. Sometimes we forget about this. Not that it's used as often, but some companies still use it. Chatter, right? Um, Chatter sites dot com and files. So, um. It's so essentially think about it, anything that is not records, right? So, so it's not only attachments, it's um, the files tab, chatter insights.com. So, um, but yeah, exactly. So, and then our organization ID, why would we need to uh, um, know about our organization ID? Uh, if we have anything to report to Salesforce or anything we need help from, to identify yeah. our ARC, we need ARC ID. Yeah, you, you need contact Salesforce, you need your it's, org ID, right? Yeah, you know, um, also the app exchange, you know, you're going to need uh, another org ID and then 15 characters, you know. So, um, so if you're going to need to be qu uh, communicating um, uh, about that, you need another org ID. So, okay, good. Any questions so far? Excellent. Continue forward. So, um, just a little, that's a little highlight there on some uh, uh, notes there. And then again, um, that uh, there are some, there is some information and between the um, locale time zone and uh, for the organization that can be overridden by the user. And then uh, data storage is for record and file storage is for attachments, files, content, or chatter. All right. Now, we're now looking at use uh, of our, our licenses. Okay. So with our user licenses. A lot of times we, we already know what our user licenses are. That so when we're used to setting up a, um, a, a, any kind of user, anything, everyone has to have a user license. You have to have one to be able to use Salesforce. We know that. Okay, so then what is a permission set um, license? So the user license should, uh, the user license, prof uh, sorry, the profile license should match with the permission set license. That's why maybe they're having that license. Not exactly sure what is it about. Okay. So it essentially just grants features beyond their um, basic license. But um, if you um, think about this, and a lot of times I don't fully completely understand this, is we take a look at some of these and we see like B2B commerce, 
you don't see any of these right here. Um, like one that I'm going to say is like you see a CRM user or you may see like a service user or a sales user um, or something along those lines, right? Because um, we've heard of the service cloud, right? We've heard of the sales cloud. And um, then also uh, the marketing cloud. But there's part of the marketing cloud, you have account engagement, which is formerly known as Pardot. So with some of these that you actually have to have um, when you install into Salesforce, for instance, when you install Pardot, also known as account engagement, then you um, have to have some of these permission set licenses. So um, for instance, you'll have to have an additional license uh, for a CRM user to be able to access the additional features that Salesforce offers. So um, to be able to use um, account engagement, you're going to have to have a permission set license. Then you have your, um, let's see here. So you have your user license. We're all pretty much familiar with our user license. Um, make sure that you're familiar with um, some of these user license. Um, like uh, um, what kind of license are you going to give um someone that you don't want them to have access to anything. And I'm, and I can't even remember it off the top of my head. I remember that question, but I don't remember the answer. Anybody remember? That may be, that, that may be a question on the test. Um, that there is a license out there that when you really don't want them to have access, they need to have access to the org, but you don't want them to have access to anything. I can't remember what license that is. I think somebody's still in chat. If we are... So I'm looking they in the chat. Know. I don't see anybody typing in chat. No, they were uh, saying it. I think you might, you are not able to hear her. Okay. Go ahead. I think it's Pat Harris. Say again. I don't know why I'm not hearing everybody. I'm sorry, I did I didn't hear. I don't know why. Okay. So I'm hearing some people and I'm, I guess I'm not hearing everybody, but okay. So moving forward, thank you for answering. If you can, uh, someone could type that in the chat too. Um, yep. So, um, all right. Uh, let's see here. Um, but okay, moving forward. So, now we also have our feature license, which is very similar to our um, very similar to our uh, permission set license. It just goes; it uh, grants us beyond our user license. We're already familiar with some of them, uh, um, which is the marketing and the knowledge CRM content. Um, uh, let's see here, and then we also have the usage base entitlements. So. Out of my experience, I've not seen anybody use the usage base entitlements, but with the um, with that, then the usage base entitlements. That being said, I'll give you an example. Um, we see this API request limit per month. Data loader. Um, data loader could be an example of a, a third party app that needs to have so many requests to gain access to Salesforce. So that could be a usage base entitlement. So that could definitely be one. Any questions there? Nope, okay, all right. Um, so, okay, continuing moving forward and this is obviously somewhere it's something that's important too, because let's go back. I want to go back one right here. I'm going to 
if all of a sudden um, you go here and we see that uh, we have um, out of Salesforce license, you have two license here, two use license. Well, let's say you have 35 here, 35 used, and you're supposed to have 33 used. What does that tell you when it says 35 used and you're supposed to have 33 used and you're supposed to have two available? Ed, I can hear you, but unfortunately, I, unfortunately, I don't think Stephen can for some reason, but yes, yeah, for, I can hear you. Yeah, for some reason, I, I, I guess I can't hear Pat. Yeah. I wonder why that is. Yeah, you need to deactivate users to make the license available. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and or freeze, um, uh, depending upon the situation, um, and or freeze them, um, uh, depending upon what it is. So uh, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, so my apologies, Pat. Um, uh, for some reason, I cannot hear you. Um, uh, I'm able to hear other people when they're speaking that I know of. You know, uh, I guess, you know, if you're speaking, I can't hear you. I don't know it, but, you know. Um, but, well, no, so the reason why Please. I said so freezing doesn't help you, okay? But you may not be able to deactivate them. Right. Until until you can remove those relationships with that contact. Exactly. Exactly. So if you can't deactivate them, you at a minimum you want to freeze them until you can deactivate them. Do you see what I mean? Yes. And then so um because uh uh um so I'm just making sure that uh, with Pat, um, Pat said freezing doesn't help you. And then Cressy said freezing won't take care of the uh, uh, free, uh, freed up license. And you are correct. It won't take care of the freed up license. So I want to just make sure that, that you are correct. It won't. But you may not be able to deactivate that person because there are other things they are involved with. If that user is involved in other actions, whether it could be workflows, whether it could be flows, it could be other processes, then um, you may not be able to deactivate that person until you get that person um, um, replaced. So you have to freeze them at a minimum and then get that person replaced before you can get them deactivated. So that way you free up that license. So that's why I said that. And then, uh, um, but I'm glad you mentioned that. Definitely glad you mentioned that. So, okay. Um, let's see here. Continuing on. All right. Now, we talked about company information, and now we're going to move on to business hours. Doing a time check here real quick. Okay. So, with our business hours, business hours and holidays, what are they used for? Let's just, let's state the obvious. Let's state the obvious so that way that's out there. Uh, so that the people will not be able to work uh, after the business hours. So it will oh. automatically log out then. Okay. Um, so that way, uh, that way yes, people can't yes. work beyond business hours. Okay. Yep. We have case escalation. Yes. Case escalation. That is um, the primary purpose for business hours is for the case escalation is for our automation. So when we take a look at having our business hours, so, and when we say this, it's beyond the obvious. And when we take a look at this, so as we go back, right, you're gonna have our normal or our default. And see, I changed the name on this. This was default and I just changed the name of the default to a normal work week, okay? Then we, then you just set this up um, uh, for your business hours, but it is for your escalation. What do we mean when we say case escalation? Why that, do we need? Uh, Go ahead. That's when uh, it counts the hours or days that the company is open. So if a case needs to go from uh, level one to a level two um, uh, situation. Yep, exactly. But what? But why does it need to know business hours? 
so those hours get cur get counted correctly or or um so that they know when uh the company is closed yeah exactly because we we definitely don't want to escalate something to like a manager or something during you know uh, uh saying hey we're going to escalate this within you know 2 hours and it's escalating it at 10 p.m. at night right we we definitely don't want to do uh, to do that so we want to make sure that it's doing it within our business hours um and then so that that's that's definitely why we have our business hours and and then our holidays too but then also and see that's when uh, when we say our business hours and holidays but then we also do that for our entitlements when when it comes to our um uh, our in, um uh, and I want to make sure I say this correctly. Um, let me go ahead and uh, to the entitlement process and milestones. Milestones and yes, yep. And, uh, thank you, thank you for helping me out. Our entitlements and our our entitlement process and milestones. What does that mean? So now we're looking at um, our. Uh, we we talked about um, how we used it for our escalation process what does that mean for our entitlement process and our milestones uh entitlement process will have uh, the steps uh, maybe first level second level of escalation and milestone will define sorry i'm i think confusing entitlement process will have a process like when it has to be escalated and uh, milestone will have the duration and first step and second step of escalation Yes, yes, you 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 are kind of describing that correctly. Yes, um, but we're talking about the escalation on the um, priority side of the aspect of because we want all our customers to think every customer is going to be uh, what do you call it um, um, high priority, right? But we know the reality of it is that every customer is not high priority but some customers are. So we have to have an internal process of saying, you know, who's more, who, what, what, what's the priority process thereof, right? So just like what you said, what's the escalation process of who has the priority, right? So that's what the entitlement process and the milestones are. That is those entitlement process, um, that um, escalation process internally for the case escalation. And I want to make sure that does those two don't get confused when I said escalation in that. Did did I explain that well? Any questions? Because the escalation is if the issue wasn't addressed within a certain time frame, it will be moved up to like maybe management or a different hierarchy. The entitlement and the milestone is how do you address the priority of your case system or your ticketing system? That's what that difference is. Okay. So I'm getting crickets. So that means uh, that means everybody's good. All right. Yep. For now, if any questions come up, Stephen, I'm sure we'll uh, we'll let oh, you. Oh yeah, almost oh, definitely. Well, so I have a hand raised. Go ahead. May I ask a question about it? Please. Um, so if you're saying milestone internally, would it be something like um, you? designated certain accounts to be, oh, I don't know, your number one tier and then other accounts to be number two. And so it goes into, it gets escalated and they're first addressing those tier ones. That would be like a milestone. Um, I'm thinking of that wrong. No, I, I think you, I do believe, I think that's a good example that you're thinking that that, that is correct. I'm saying that um, if they, if this, this, this ticket qualifies. So let's say out of a thousand tickets, how are we going to prioritize this? You know, and if they reach this, um, uh, uh, this entitlement, then yes, they're going to be prioritized here. And then we're going to have certain milestones for them. 
So I, I, okay. I and and then I and I think maybe, and I'm I'm hoping I'm not uh, um, over explaining or explaining sideways. Maybe we're saying the same thing two different ways. Okay, I think I've always been clear about the how the business hours um, influence the escalation. But when it came to milestone, I just kind of memorized that it had something to do with milestones. But I, yeah, I had never really been crystal clear about what those looked like. But I thought maybe I just hadn't gotten to that part yet in my studying. And then we'll clear that up and we'll see about clearing that up later on. And we okay. could definitely see about clearing that up later on. Um, and then so just for the sake of time, we have about 10 minutes left. And then um, does this apply? So Hillary asked, does this apply to the approval process as well? Um, yes and no. Um, so uh, that can apply to the approval process um, uh, uh, for that because uh, we are dictating everything based off of business hours. So we are still dictating everything off of uh, that. And then, um, so yes, so we take a look at that. All right. And um, so anything we look for escalation. Okay. Now we looked there, we looked for a fiscal year. Okay. So this is going to be our last little part right here for fiscal year and currencies. And then for currencies, we're going to go more into on Thursday as well, by the way, because I didn't want to do too much because once you do it, you can't undo it. Um, now, da -da 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 -da. so let's take a look at our fiscal year. So fiscal year here. So of course it comes out of the box with the fiscal year we see our standard and then our custom. We know we have both. And, and there may be a question there on the test. Yes, you can do a, um, a custom year, okay? Once you do a custom year, can you go back and forth? Once you enable custom year? No. No, you can't. Once you enable it, it's done. It is said and done. It is there, okay? So just make sure that once you have started it, it is done. You cannot go back, okay? And then um, something else that throws people off too. Take a look at this picture right here. Um, let me go back over to find my mouse and I will highlight this. The ending of the month, the beginning of the month. The fiscal year is based on the ending of the month, the starting of the month. We could do it for any month. So when we're looking at our standard fiscal year, any month at the end of the month or the starting of the month. Okay. So if we look at that, the standard fiscal year, because there may be a question that tries to throw you off with the standard fiscal year. It could be you can start the standard fiscal year of any month at the ending of the month or the beginning of the month. So it could be March. It could be any month. That could possibly be a question on the test. So just want to make sure I throw that out there. All right. Then um, also once once we go, let me go back one as well real quick. Um, we're just pushing a couple minutes here. Um, once you do enable into the fiscal year going into the custom years, the custom year does have um, predefined sections. We will take a look at this on Thursday. It does have predefined sections in it. Um, and then, of course, you can always set up custom, you know, your custom year because it's custom. And the reason why is because it has quarters, right? You know, to where one quarter could be four months, the others could be three. You know, um, you can have some set up to where it could be set up many different ways. It's called because it's custom. Okay. And then, of course, yes, there is still a template for a traditional Gregorian fiscal year once custom has been activated. There might be a question on that. Can you still set a regular 
custom fiscal. Can you set a regular traditional fiscal year? Um, once custom year has been activated. Yes, you can. Yes. There might be a, a question on that. Okay. So finished up here real quick. Currencies. I haven't finished activating. I started doing it, but then I stopped myself because I did not want to finish doing this. I want to make sure we did this all together. So um, with currencies, okay, you can have single currencies and multiple currencies, okay? So if you have single currencies, it will be on the company information page, okay? And it will be, of course, the default if it's only a single. So remember that. It's the default. If it's only a single currency, it's the default. It can't change because it's a single currency. But if there's multiple currencies, then it could be changed. Okay. That's when we go back to our default and local currencies. That's when things can be changed. But if there's only a single currency, there's only a single currency, there's a default currency. It can't be changed. Okay. And then, um, again, this is another one that with multiple currencies, once it's enabled, you cannot go back, all right, which I have not enabled. We will do that together on Thursday, all right? Um, let's see here. And then, of course, uh, we have not talked about exchanged, uh, exchange rates, dated exchange rates. We can both enable those. We'll do those at that on Thursday. And then um, there is an app that you can use to do dated exchange rates too, okay? So any questions? I know we have come up to, we just have a couple of minutes left. I have about four minutes left so far. So on Thursday, expectations here. So let me um, do this. Uh, on uh, Thursday, we are going to, I'll stop sharing the uh, uh, camera here. What we're going to do is uh, we're going to go into our dev org. And just like the way we started, we're going to go into company settings. Any kind of tips I can share, I will try to share with you. And then we're going to go step by step. And um, as we go through this, uh, we'll try to set up tasks. That way you can accomplish tasks in between every week. Um, and you can try to follow along. We're going to try to build out our dev org. So that way you can at least have one app and um, uh, uh, some kind of come somewhat of a complete dev org by the time we are done with this. And hopefully by the time we are done here by mid to uh, mid April, late May, excuse me, mid April, um, to late April, you will be a certified admin and we will be rocking and rolling. Do I have any questions? No. I had a quick question, please. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, Stephen, I wanted to find out. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit late um today. I, I got the times mixed up. Will there be a recording for what we I missed tonight by chance? Yes, there will. Um, the recording will be putting out the recordings for today and Thursday out on um, the recordings will be put out on every Friday. Okay, perfect. And where will that be at? Just so I can make sure I have it correct. Um, the link for those recordings we'll be putting out on um our LinkedIn channel, my personal LinkedIn channel, Tanya's personal LinkedIn channel, and then also um, the Salesforce Stephen um, uh, LinkedIn uh, uh, channel. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And then um, so, uh, um, and, and again, um, we'll be putting all the uh, information out. Um, I will be sending out another reminder probably tomorrow about Thursday's class. So that way we'll get our hands on, get our hands dirty, okay? Perfect. All right. Well, and I always try to be respectful of everybody's time. We're coming up right on uh, the top of the hour. So um, thank you very much. If we don't have any more questions, I hope everybody has a good evening. I'll see you later. Great. Thank you. We'll see you Thanks, very much. Bye. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye now. Thanks. You're welcome. Bye-bye.